you will get the option to execute this microflow in a task queue. If you select this, you can then select the task queue you created previously. Multi-threading is the ability of a CPU or processor to execute multiple actions at the same time. It can have many benefits like making your app more responsive and increasing performance, but it also has several things to keep in mind when using it. That's why today I'm going to be showing you how to make your Mendix 9 app multi-threaded. There are many ways to do this, but today I will be showing you two different methods of quickly and easily making your app multi-threaded. Option one is the execute microflow in background Java action which is available in the marketplace in the community commons function library module. This method is simple and easy to implement, but it's more of a quick fix to get around long wait times for a single process to finish. Option two is the new task queue, which is built into Studio Pro 9. This replaces the older method of the process queue, which is also a marketplace module, but that method is only for Mendix 8 and below. This option is more robust and offers more control over how the threads are executed, as well as having better logging capabilities and error handling for failed threads. Okay, so for option one, to get started, you have to go to the marketplace and download the community commons module into your project. Select add as a new module and click import. Select okay. and select OK again to finish. OK, so then you can now use the execute in background microflow. Um, simply add an action to your microflow. Select Java action. Look for execute microflow in background. Now this expects the microflow you wish to call and in the scenario it is the send confirmation email one. We can just copy the name from here. This expects a context object and we can supply the order object. Too. Decide if you want to use the return value. We don't need it here so you can select no. And that's it. That's all for option one. You can then delete the microflow you replaced. Okay. So for option two, using the new task queue feature, which is now part of Mendix 9, to create a task queue is quite easy. Just right click in your module or folder where you want it and select add other, and then look for task queue. Give it a name. and select the number of threads that you want to be executed in this task queue. The max is 40, um, but really you will probably only ever need two or three. Okay. Now, whenever you call a microflow or a Java action inside of another microflow, you will get the option to execute this microflow in a task queue. If you select this, you can then select the task queue you created previously. Now when this microflow executes, it will execute on its own unique thread at the end of this transaction. This option is also available in Mendix's Java API, so you can also execute other actions and microflow from your custom Java actions in another thread. Finally, there is the task queue helpers module available in the marketplace, which contains a bunch of overview pages to monitor and administer your threads. But there's also several things to consider when using multi-threading in your application. Number one, the more threads you create, the more load you put on your app. Too many threads can slow down your app significantly. Normally two or three is plenty. Number two, the threads always execute in a first in first out order but you can't actually guarantee the order they will trigger in. So make sure that no thread is dependent on the data from another thread. Number three, 
Any objects used as parameters need to be committed before the thread is created. Number four, a new thread will only trigger after the transaction is called in. This is because it's not possible to create new threads in the middle of a transaction. Multi-threading is a powerful tool in any developer's toolkit, but with great power comes great responsibility, and you should always be careful about how you use it. That's all for now. Go make it.